welcome back to your simile point today I'm going to discuss the again important topic in uh, endocrinology is uh, adrenal insufficiency um, what you need to know regarding uh, with the um, your know, simile examination um, only I will be discussing those points okay so try spending some time with me nearly five minutes that's it okay um, you can see here the ACTH stimulation test. Um, this is a definitive test for adrenal insufficiency. Okay, let me start. Okay, so we have access. We need to know the access before understanding adrenal insufficiency. Um, like uh, we have a hypothalamus secretes a CRH. CRH goes and stimulates the pituitary to secrete ACTH. ACTH goes and stimulates the adrenals and secretes the cortisol what is adrenal insufficiency is just like adrenals are not working when adrenals are not working cortisol is not secreted what does the cortisol do cortisol has an inhibitory feedback it inhibits the secretion of ACTH and CRH by acting on hypothalamus and pituitary so now we have a two types that is a primary adrenal insufficiency and a secondary adrenal insufficiency in primary adrenal insufficiency the defect lies in the adrenals the most common cause for a primary ad adrenal insufficiency is not known that is idiopathic the other causes are addison's disease trauma infection like a TB infection with a MAC cytomegalovirus fungal infections hemorrhages there are many things okay so this is a primary what is primary the defect lies in the adrenal when there is a defect in the adrenals what happens the cortisol is not secreted so the ACTH level will increase it rises right so what is adrenal insufficiency i'm concerned about the primary right now so adrenals are not working so acth level will increase right okay now we are discussing about the symptoms since cortisol steroids have many functions on glucose and other metabolisms so we see variety of symptoms like hypoglycemia dehydration weight loss what you need to remember is hypoglycemia weight loss very important low blood pressure how does this affects blood pressure that's very important and the important thing is the orthostatic hypotension rest or muscle aches cardiovascular collapse because of the potassium the other thing is the addison's disease in the primary First, let me tell you how do you differentiate the primary adrenal insufficiency from secondary adrenal insufficiency. In a primary, the adrenals are not working, though the cortisol is not secreted, the ACTH level increases, right, from the pituitary. Whereas in a secondary, what happens? The cause is not in adrenals, so someone is stimulating adrenals to secrete the cortisols. If someone, okay. So this is uh, what the. Um, exactly it works okay what is secondary um, adrenal insufficiency it's nothing but the cause is in the pituitary or the hypothalamus for example in america the most in common cause for secondary adrenal is uh, exogenous steroid use so this is very important cause secondary important uh, secondary adrenal insufficiency so uh, the other thing i would like to tell you is uh, if they give the history of a postpartum postpartum sorry postpartum and there was a history they give history during the labor there was a heavy bleeding and after that she develops the signs and symptoms of adrenal insufficiency what is the cause for her symptoms it's nothing but a shihan syndrome shihan syndrome when there is a loss of blood during the delivery it causes necrosis of the pituitary and decreases the ACTH level and hence the adrenals doesn't secrete the cortisol. So the one thing that differentiate from primary and the secondary is the ACTH levels. Since Addison's disease is a primary disease, 
so the ACTH level increases this ACTH causes hyperpigmentation okay especially in the skin creases goiter vitiligo since they are autoimmune disorders can be seen in the primary adrenal insufficiency so let's move on to next slide okay what is the effect on a sodium and a potassium very important for USMLE it acts on since adrenal insufficiency the cortisol are affected as well as the aldosterone is also affected when aldosterone level is affected there is a fluctuation there is a change in the sodium and the potassium what aldosterone does it increases physiology it increases the sodium absorption and the water and the causes excretion of the potassium so when it's there is a deficiency the sodium level is decreased there's a loss of sodium there's a loss of water and the potassium increases hyperkalemia so because of this there will be a hypotension so now you tell me acidosis or alkalosis i told you one point one important point that is when there is a hyperkalemia just remember about the acidosis there will be a mild acidosis okay Addisonians crisis if they give the history same as the adrenal insufficiency and they add a fever in it then it is going to be Addisonians crisis what is the best test okay that is the ACTH stimulation test how do we do cortisol levels are obtained before and after administration of ACTH a normal person should show a brisk rise in the cortisol level after ACTH stimulation ACTH administration okay this is the best test how do you manage you need to give what is insufficient like glucocorticoids mineral corticoids and sodium chloride USMLE points what you need to remember is the diagnosis how you diagnose the disease is very important they give the clinical history so try to remember the signs and some symptoms best test is ACTH stimulation test differentiate between primary and the secondary ACTH level high is the primary low is secondary electrolytes effect on the potassium and the sodium because of loss of aldosterone hyponatremia hyperkalemia acidosis is seen thank you so much for watching my video let me know rate subscribe and comment thank you so much